Amen. I want you to take your Bibles and turn with us this morning to the book of Psalms. Psalms 101. Psalms 101. And I'm going to try to bring you a message, amen, that God put on our heart uh, probably a couple of months ago. Uh, and I was going up the road one morning. And you know how you just kind of look around and try to see things and uh, take things in, you know. And I was going up the road, Josh, one morning and uh, God just spoke to my heart, amen, about a message and just started developing it and uh, preached it down to church. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you preach and you try to preach the truth, amen, sometimes people's not going to like it. Uh, you know, the, the Bible is a two-edged sword, amen. Uh, Hebrews 4.12, it cuts coming and going. And I'm going to tell you, the truth's always the truth. Amen, I, I never did like it when my dad had to chasten me when I was a young kid. Uh, but he didn't do that because he hated me, Brother Bob. He done it because he loved me, amen. And, uh, but I'm just going to try to preach what God put on my heart, and I hope it'll help us, amen. amen. Psalms 101, let's all stand. You've been seated for a little while. Let's stand, and we'll read uh, Psalms 101, and then we'll pray and let you be seated. A Psalm of David here, verse number 1. He said, I will sing of mercy of, and judgment unto thee. O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt, oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me, and I will not know a wicked person. Whoso proudly slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, and that, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. And he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Amen. Brother Bob, how about you leading us, my friend, if you don't mind in prayer. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want you to look, if you will, this morning at verse number 3, Psalms 101, and verse number 3, where David said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave. That word cleave simply means to stick. It shall not cleave to me. I want to preach to you this morning with this thought in mind. On the curse of modern technology. On the curse of modern technology. Now, I never bring my cell phone in church. <laughs> amen. That'd be a good. That'd be a good thing for all of us. Amen. And I never bring my cell phone in church. I tell the church when I preach this message at home, my cell phone will never go off in a church service. You know why? Because it's not with me. <laughs> Amen. Now, Brother Doug was so gracious this morning to let me borrow this iPad, and he knows I'm not a, a very up-to-date person. Amen. I'm old school. Uh, Doug's a little different than I am, and that, uh, he's a blessing. Amen. But these iPads and, uh, amen, the Internet and things, and, and I know I've, I've talked to Brother Doug, and I know uh, certainly you as parents, and maybe you as a teenager, a young person, amen, has probably uh, run into some trouble by dealing with modern technology. Right. Now let me say at the outset of the message this morning that it is a blessing. It can be a blessing. Amen. I mean, it can be a blessing if it's used in the right way. Uh, I mean, you know, the modern technology, I mean, you know, people post pictures and things. You can People see grandparents, see their grandchildren and 
uh, people get on there and you know they can post scripture, amen, on, on the computer and, and things like that. It can be a positive thing, Brother Larry. It can be a good thing if it's used in the right way. But I want to say to you as a pastor, the Brother Denny, the, some of the things that I've had to deal with uh, as a pastor, Josh, amen, uh, that I have had to had some real uh, bad things, amen, to happen, especially with the younger generation dealing with this modern technology. Amen. Especially, amen, on this de-Facebook. Now, my people know down at Victory, they know that I abhor that. I despise it. I don't only hate it, I despise it, amen. I don't have a Facebook account, amen. If you, might, if you see my face on Facebook, it's not because of me. It's because somebody else has planted it on there. I don't do that, amen. And that, that's your personal preference, and that's all right. But I've had to deal with so much uh, anguish uh, with that, amen, that I just despise it, amen. I want to say to you, friend, everything that God creates, Satan can turn it around, amen, and use it for bad. What God creates, Satan can use it to deviate from the things of God. Satan can turn a positive into a negative. He can take things, amen, that God uh, may use for good. He can turn around, Brother Thad, and use them for bad, amen. Amen or not. You think about this. I thought about this, Brother Doug. Think about all the time that's wasted, amen, of people sitting in front of a computer. Just think about it, amen. What would our lives, Brother Larry, what would our lives be like now, amen, if we didn't have a computer or cell phone? Kevin, what, what would our lives, you think about the time that people just sat in front of, of a computer. Now, I know sometimes it's necessary, Brother Gerald, sometimes people have to do it on their jobs. They have to use it, amen, to fulfill their responsibilities of their jobs and stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of time, amen, that is wasted on a computer playing games, amen, sitting there getting on social networking, amen, writing things about people, amen, that uh, you shouldn't be writing about, amen, gossiping, somebody say amen. <laughs> y'all may not have wished Brother Doug had me up today, amen. <laughs> this is what's on my heart, amen. Think about the time you can't even get in your automobile and go up the road and not unless you see somebody talking on a cell phone. And this is where God planted this message in my heart. I was going up the road one morning and, and, and the ch people at our church know I, I don't like for my phone to ring, I'll be honest with you. Most of the time, amen, when my phone rings, it's bad news, <laughs> amen. There's trouble and somebody's having trouble with their family or trouble at church, some of their children, amen, there's family problems, financial problems. Very seldom, I got one man uh, most time in church that had called me up and say, Preacher, I want to take you out for lunch. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen or not. Uh, but, but you know, you can't hardly see somebody going up the road today. Everybody is mesmerized by the cell phone, right, right, right. by modern technology. Amen. The time that people spend on them things. Amen. You think about the time spent on those things, that time that could be reading the Word of God. Time that could be, time that is wasted, amen, clean on those things that are was on that modern technology that could be spent giving time to prayer. Amen. Now, it's not only, it's, te it's television as well. I preached this message Sunday at our, the other Sunday at our church. I had one young man, he got, he must have really got convicted about it, Brother Doug. He, he got ill and he come up to me and he talking about somebody else. He said, well, they sat in front of the television, amen. And the Holy Ghost told me he lives on a computer, amen. Right. Right. Amen or not? But you think about it, friend, the time that is wasted on those things. What if you, what if you read the Bible I think you ought to give God as much time as you spend on the internet. Amen? As much time we spend on the computer and on the internet, you ought to give that much time or more to God. Think about how much more we know about the Bible. Amen? 
We, if we read the Bible and studied the Bible like we do on, on these computers and cell phones, amen, Rod, just think about if we stuck our nose in the Word of God and spent that time in the Bible, how much more knowledge would we have about the Bible? Amen? It's not only your pastor's job to feed you, amen, and give you the Word of God. It's your job as well, amen, to study your Bible and let the Holy Ghost speak to you. List these verses, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Paul said, study to show thyself, thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Listen to the next verse, verse 16. He said, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. <laughs> now I wrote right under, my, right under that verse, the internet and Facebook. That's what I wrote right there. <laughs> Brother Doug, I'm sure you probably experienced some problems, amen, de dealing with this modern technology. Yes, I've, had, I've had kids, and most of the time it's, it's kids, little kids, uh, that get on the internet, and they'll post stuff on social networking, and yes. Facebook, and they'll say things about other little kids in church. I've almost had a couple of families leave the church, Miss Eloise on account of it, and, and I had nothing to do with it whatsoever. And you know what I had to do? I had to go waste my time because of some little kid getting on there posting a remark that they shouldn't post. My daddy always told me this. He said, son, if you can't say something to somebody's face, don't say nothing at all, amen. They can hide behind that computer screen, amen, and say something derogatory or something, amen, that's going to hurt somebody's feelings, amen. And I've had to go to people's houses and sit for hours, Brother Larry, and cancel and deal with them and almost beg them to stay at church, amen, uh, because, of, because of this stuff. Now let me say again, Brother Stephen, if used in the right way, it's a blessing. If you get on there and post scripture and, you know, say something about your church doing good and, boy, the preacher preached a good man, I, I'm not totally, our people think I'm totally against it. I just don't use it, amen. But, but it can be good. But for the most part, it's not. Amen. The time that is used, amen, wasted on that. Not only that, Brother Doug, I thought about this. Not only the time, but think about the dimes. <laughs> I don't know about you, but they don't give away these computers. Well, it's getting quiet in here, amen. And I don't even really know what that is. But they, they, they don't give these away. Amen. I'll tell you how much you, well, how much I think about a cell phone. I got one of these old flip phones. Amen. I don't I don't have a smartphone for a dumb person. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't even know how to use one of my phones. I really wouldn't. I tell you, and I listen. They don't give you these things. You have to purchase them. Then when you purchase them. Brother Denny, you got to sign up for a contract. There's more money. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Americans ain't broke. You look at everybody that's carrying around a computer, laptop, amen, i5 phone, amen, and cell phones and laptops. I'm going to tell you, Americans ain't broke. They, they, they either got money or had money or either they're in debt. <laughs> Amen. Why do you think they build these Verizon stores and have about eight people meet you at the door when you go in there? Somebody say amen. You're paying for that, amen. We get these things. I got, I got tape holding my cover on. Y'all see that? <laughs> I got masking tape holding my cover on, amen. Not only do you buy phones, hey, the covers are expensive. They got now on cell phones, I've heard of people paying 80 and a hundred dollars for a stupid cover. I'm going to tell you, if you got that kind of money you waste, you need to be taken on a missionary. Y'all help me now, amen. If you got that kind of money, amen, you can waste, amen, 
on that stuff just so you can look nice and everybody, you know, think your phone's pretty, amen, and look good. Hey, think about those missionaries, Danny Mexico, Brother Luther, and some of these other people, amen, down there starving to death that you could take that $50, amen, and support a national pastor to give out the gospel to try to get people to heaven, amen. Amen or not? Now, I don't want you there again. Some of you, amen, looking kind of sired at me. Uh, I'm, I'm from the old school. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Amen, I love people. And I'm not totally against this stuff. And I know it can be used. But I'm going to tell you, the, the stuff that I've had to deal with, amen, you should get a pastor's uh, view of it, amen. It's a total different world. <laughs> we have to clean up the messes, amen. I wonder how many times these items are bought Laptops, iPads, and cell phones are bought, and boy, God gets robbed. I tell you, I, I love my son. I love him. But I'm going to tell you what, he's, he, he can't do that, his phone. Son, I mean, the other week he had to cut his phone off. I don't know. I, I don't keep, you know, messing all his business. But I know this, he had to get some money, and it wasn't a little bitty money to get his phone cut back on. I mean, can't do without it. Go to bed with it. Get up with it, amen. I mean, act like they can't live without it. Amen. Boy, I thought, boy, I thought unto God, boy, I wish he'd do his Bible like that. <laughs> Cell phone versus the Bible. I wonder what would happen if we treated our Bibles like we treat our cell phones. What if we carried it around in our purses and in our pockets? I guarantee you probably almost everybody sitting in here this morning either got a cell phone in your purse or either got it on your hip, amen. I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand, amen. What if every time we turn back, amen, to get it, every time we forgot it? You know what I've seen in our church, Brother Doug, Brother Pete, and kids at church? They'll leave their Bibles. They won't come back after them. But I'm going to tell you what, if they leave them cell phones in the pew, they'll be calling the preacher, can you unlock the door, church door, so I can get my cell phone? They'll leave her Bible there for a week. Ain't we having a time, amen? What if we flip through it several times a day? I mean, it's not just young people. It's some older people. I mean, they have to have it in their hands glued to their hands. I go out and eat with people, Brother Doug, under God. I go out and eat with people, Brother Gerald, and they're sitting there, you're trying to eat with them and having a hot dog, trying to have fellowship, and you can't even have fellowship with them. Jordan, they're sitting there talking on that stupid phone. When I go in a restaurant with somebody, you know what I do? I cut my phone off. We need cell phone etiquette. <laughs> I cut my phone off. Clint, I know nobody ain't going to call me while I'm eating. You know why? Because it's off. The power's off. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to talk to me, Brother Randy, Brother Steve, they can leave me a voicemail. Amen. I can get into that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen or not. But it gets on my nerves. I mean, we're so overwhelmed by this stuff. We're, I mean, listen, we're overwhelmed. We're overtaken with that stuff. Amen. Like we can't live without it. Amen. What if we give, amen, Bibles as, uh, to our kids as gifts rather than cell phones and iPads and computers? What if we use it as we travel? Now everybody's got their internet on their phone. That costs a little more, amen. Got GPS on their phone. Amen. We need God's plan of salvation. That's GPS we need, Amen. Hey, what if we used it in case of an emergency? Oh, I got to have my cell phone. What if I what if I get caught? What if I do this? Amen. What if you just thought about you had to have your Bible if it's more important to you than your cell phone? Amen. And one more thing, unlike our cell phone, we don't ever have to worry about our Bible being disconnected because Jesus already paid the bill. There's no drop calls. There's no dead service areas with God. You don't need a cell phone or a home charger. There's no service fees, no contract to renew every two years, amen. 
Amen. One man said this, Brother Larry, I like this right here, amen. If I can get this open. He said this, we don't need iPads and iPhones. We need to get closer to the great I am. Amen. Now listen, friend, not only the time and the dime, think about the crime. Now God give me this, amen. Think about the crime that's committed with modern technology. You ever look on the news and hear about people hanging themselves, amen, because somebody sent some kind of dirty picture, amen, over the internet or over a cell phone, humiliated them, embarrassed them, committed suicide. Down home, there's several kids being killed recently. Down home, amen. You know why? Because they can't stay off their cell phones while they're driving. How many people you ever seen, amen, going down the road seeing texting on the cell phones? Anybody ever seen anybody doing that? How many times you ever go down the road and see somebody reading their Bible? (laughs) Amen. The crime that's committed with these things. Amen. Kids texting. And in South Carolina, they got a commercial on. Amen, the state does. and shows a little girl that got maimed in a wreck. Brother Thad, she got maimed and messed her eye up on one side of her face. She said, here's what happens when you text and drive. Well, it's quiet now. I mean, you know, when you're telling truth, it gets quiet. Amen. There's one little town, Clemson, amen. Thank God for Clemson right down the road, Mus. They, they have banned texting citywide, banned it. Amen. amen. If you get caught texting on a cell phone in Clemson, they will find you. Praise God in the land forever, amen. I wish it was United States wide. Amen. I mean, we, we, it's almost like we got to be connected. I don't know about you, but I don't want people knowing my business. I was preaching this down home, Brother Doug. I told my people, get on there, amen, on Facebook and say, well, we're going to be gone for two weeks in July. We're going on vacation. I said, I hope a thief comes to your house and steals everything you got, amen, when you put it on the internet and tell everybody your business. I hope they come and steal everything you got, amen. (laughs) I said, preacher, you just mean, hey, I'm not an idiot. (laughs) I'm not going to get on the internet and tell everybody every time I go to the restroom. <laughs> Somebody say amen or oh me. I mean, we're, we're addicted to that stuff. We become a society that's addicted to modern technology, amen, and we wonder why we don't see revival and we're not seeing souls saved, amen, because Satan uses that uh, as division and gossip and slander, amen, and it tears down people's testimonies and character, amen. Amen. The deaths on the highway and uh, friend, it's ridiculous. Hey, they could be people killing musicians and killing great preachers because they're texting on the cell phone and haven't asked it. Amen? Now let me just say this, and I'm going to get right on the end of the message, amen. Let me say this, think of the souls that's going to spend eternity in hell. Have you ever been sitting around in service and somebody's cell phone go off? Have you ever done that, preacher? Something we had a revival the other month. And had Brother Eddie down for revival, and Brother Larry, he was up preaching, amen, and got right there, I think the choir might have been singing, Brother Denny, I believe it was, and son, a cell phone, Brother Clint, it went off, and it went off, and it went off, and it kept going off. And the more it rung, the harder my blood pressure got, amen. I mean, I got ill. The Bible does say, be ye angry and sin not, Amen. You thought off maybe, you know, the second or the third ring, they would cut it off. On and on and on. Now, I mean, I'll tell you what it did. Satan used that to kill the service. It took the spotlight off the the Word of God and the man of God. Amen. And and Satan used that to distract. I got up for Brother Larry and I said, 
And I looked at the person, you know, I, I said, do you know what off is? <laughs> Amen. I mean, at least have enough respect. If you carry your phone in church, at least have enough respect. One or two things, either to cut it on vibrate or cut it off. You should have enough respect not even bring it in church. Amen? Amen. Think if somebody was sitting beside you during the invitation, amen, and they were lost going to hell under conviction, amen, and boy, the preacher preached, and then all of a sudden they were thinking about stepping out and coming down and getting saved, and all of a sudden your cell phone went off. Somebody say Amen. We got little kids down there at church and I keep saying little kids but I, I keep hearing reports and I, if I seen everything went on at church we probably wouldn't have no congregation left. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Some of my older people they'll come to the preacher and kids sitting back there texting, texting. I said tell them to stop. Yeah, right. Don't come tell me. You tell them. Tell them I said to tell them to stop. Amen. Yeah, you see kids playing on the cell phone in church. Amen. Stop and say quit. Respect the man of God in the church. Pay attention. Cut your phone off. Amen, Amen. Amen or not? I want to say this to you, friend. Listen. The curse of modern technology. I want to say, number one, when we, when we are enveloped with that stuff and we're overwhelmed with that, you know what we're doing? We're choosing the carnal over the spiritual. Amen. We may not get all these points in this morning, but look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 12. Amen. I, I can tell some ain't liking this, and that's all right. I love you anyway. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, look at verse 12. Paul said, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Brother Steve touched on this, amen, in Sunday school. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. We, we're choosing, amen, the carnal over the spiritual. Amen. And I have people tell me this. I've had them come. Well, preacher, I've got my Bible uh, on, uh, on the cell phone. I can read my Bible on the cell phone. Yeah, but how many times do you do that? How many times are you actually doing that? That's a defense, amen, that's a good defense if you're reading it and using it. Amen, Brother Denny said this, and he gave this illustration the other day, Brother Doug at church, he's got a young grandson, how old is Benny? Three years old, and he, they stayed with him there, and Brother Denny was sitting there, and I think he said he had his phone on his Bible, and he was sitting there in, in, in a chair, and said he was sitting there, had it in his hand, he'd reading it, you know, and said his grandson come by and asked him, said, Papa, he said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm reading my Bible. And Brother Denny said this. He said, Brother Rod, if I'd have had my Bible in my hand, he would not have had to ask me what I was doing. I thought about this, Brother Doug. I thought about this. Amen. Preachers now, if you're not careful, amen, preachers carrying computers to the pulpit, amen, and, and you know, all of that's good if it's got its place, amen, but how is a man of God known? When a preacher comes into church, how do you know who's the preacher and the man of God? He's carrying a Bible. Amen? And see, if we're not careful what the world and uh, Satan, amen, is trying to do, and the devil hates the Word of God. He hates the Word of God. The very first lie he told was trying to cast doubt on the word of God during the Garden of Eden. He hates the Bible. And if he can do anything to get the word of God out of our hands and away from our eyes, amen, to get us further away from God, he will do it, amen. He's a master deceiver. Amen. 
Now let me say this to you, friend. That spirituality leads to deep things of God. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter two, look at verse number 10. Paul said, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You're not going to learn the deep things of God by living on a computer. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. I had one man ask me one time, and I, I, I give God the glory for it, I'm nothing, but I try to learn scripture and quote it and put it in my heart. I don't get that amen by living in front of a computer. I try to read my Bible, say that amen, and read it, and read it, and reread it, and keep on reading it. Brother Steve said this in Sunday school, amen, just keep on studying, you'll never learn it all, never know it all, just keep on studying and reading the Bible, Jordan, amen. Hey, you let that word of God sink inside of you, let it get in your mind and in your heart that you may be able to fight against the wiles of the devil. Amen. I, I want more of God in me and less of Greg. I want more of God in me and less of the world. Amen. I want to get closer to God. James 4, verse 7 and 8, he said, Submit yourself therefore to God. You draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Amen. Choosing the carnal over the spiritual. Beloved, when these things uh, overwhelm our life and overtake our life. Amen. I've seen it in my own kids' life. We was at supper the other night, and I, I watched my daughter, Greta. I love her, and she just celebrated a year anniversary. We were sitting around the supper table, and she'd take a bite to eat, and she'd look at her phone. <laughs> amen. She'd take a bite, look at that phone, amen. I, mean, I, I don't have to look at my phone to have a good time. If I want to look at something pretty, I look at my wife. <laughs> amen. Somebody say Amen. Amen. I don't have to have a cell phone, amen, to overwhelm my attention, amen, to arrest me away from the things that I need to keep my attention on, amen. 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 And I'll tell you what happens, friend. When we let those worldly devices overwhelm us, amen, what happens? It leads to carnality. Amen. It leads, Brother Doug, to division, to strife, and to jealousy. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians 3. Paul said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, and neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there uh, is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal? Verse 4, For one saith, I am of a Paul, another I am of a Paulus. Are ye not carnal? Amen. I've seen little kids, Brother Denny, there in church. So they'll get a new phone, you know, and the boy won't be long before the other kids got to have a new phone. Amen. One of them got a new cover, and they're always updating that stuff. Amen. They come out with phone now, paying four and five hundred dollars for a phone. Good night in the morning. I mean, come on. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Amen. I gotta eat. Amen. I'd rather buy gas or clothes, amen, something you can, you know, enjoy, amen. Yeah. What that does, that leads to carnality. Right. Well, I've, I've got an I've got a iPad. Well, I, I've got to get one. Yeah. Amen, I've got a new laptop. Somebody say amen. Yeah. When something comes out, the best of it, amen, we've got to go upgrade and we've got to go get better and best, amen. What's wrong with being content? Philippians 4.11, Paul said, Not that I speak in respect to want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am to, therewith to be content. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, he said, But godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. I'm going to tell you, if somebody in our church gets a new car, praise the Lord for it. Hey, man, I don't have to have one. <laughs> you know why? Because along with new car comes new car payments. Somebody in our church gets a bigger house, praise the Lord for it. I'm trying to get mine paid off. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Contentment is not getting what we want, but being satisfied with what we have. A tent or a hut, why should I care? They're building a mansion for me over there. 
Amen. 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 That word divide means to separate. It means to sever. It means to cause to disagree. Amen. Right, right. Well, how I many of you seen that on Facebook? D Facebook. That's what I call it. I mean, there's war fought on there, friend. There's war fought on there. I mean, there's, there's church problems that come up on account of that stuff. Amen. People getting on there gossiping, amen, slandering, running somebody down, defaming somebody's character. Y'all know what I'm talking about, amen. Every single one of us has been affected by it. I mean, our kids, they'll be sitting around their phone. It's almost like a Joe electricity. I mean, it goes off every two or three seconds. That gets on my nerves. I'm just being honest with you. Who in the world would want something to go off every two or three seconds? <laughs> Silence is golden. I like to sit around the house, Brother Darrell. I like to sit there sometimes. My wife come in, she says, How come you ain't got no lights on? I like to just sit around the dark. Have some solace, amen, some silence, amen. And then not the power bill ain't going up, amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. <laughs> amen, Doug. Envy, that word envy means discontent. It means ill will over another's advantages or possessions. Amen. It means a desire for something that another has. Well, if you've seen this new phone I got. Amen. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Some of y'all mama, daddy, grandpa, grandma, y'all probably brought them grandkids, amen, a new stupid phone. Amen. Because somebody down the street got one. Amen. At least what that stuff leads to. Amen. Strife. That word strife means contention. It means to fight or to quarrel. It means to struggle, amen. Y'all ever seen anybody, amen, getting get fights so on, on account of that? Y'all ever had any dealings with y'all's kids or grandkids because somebody said something about them on the internet? Y'all y'all parents or grandparents ever had to deal with any of that stuff? Shake your head if you know what I'm talking about, amen. I know as a pastor, Doug, I know you've had to deal with it. It can be a blessing. Amen, but I'm going to tell you what, it is. it can be a curse. Amen. Let me give you this, friend. When we let that modern technology override us, not only are we choosing the carnal over the spiritual, but I want to say second of all, we're choosing the worldly over worship. Amen. Brother Phil, we're choosing the worldly over worship. Listen to these verses, 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15, he said, Love not the world, neither the things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now I'm going to say something right here, and I'm, I'm probably not even going to deal with my third point. I'm, I'm going to close. I'm going to say something right here. I want you to listen to this, amen. Listen, I'm going to tell you what these things have done. They have ruined marriages. Caused divorce. Hey Amen. Somebody get somebody's number and start calling them. Start calling somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband. Somebody say amen, amen. Now let me just say this to you. If your husband or wife has a cell phone, <laughs> amen, they have a D Facebook account or they have something like that, as your spouse, if they won't let you look at the text messages and the people that's called you and sending you messages, if they won't let you look at it, there's something going on, friend. Good. I was born at night, but not last night. I don't want a bunch of people calling my wife, Brother Doug. It don't need to be calling her. Right. Amen? Amen. See, that stuff, a big forest fire starts with a little spark. Amen? amen. I know, Clint, I know marriages, amen, 
that's had divorce on account of that stuff started, amen, on a cell phone or over a computer. Getting on there, amen, and then have to hide it. Anytime you have to hide anything, it's wrong. Jesus didn't hide nothing. What he done, he done it out where everybody could see it. John 8, 12, he said, I'm the lie of the world. Amen. Hey, if somebody calls me and me and my wife together, Brother Doug, I don't have to look at it and say, well, I'll get that later. Might be my girlfriend. I ain't got but three girlfriends. Joyce, Holly, and Greta. Hey, amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Yeah. I've been around people before. I ain't lying to you. I've been around some preachers. Yeah. It bothers me. Yeah. I've been around them before. Amen. Be talking to them. They get a phone call and then walk off. Why are they walking off? Why can't they talk right there around you where you can hear what they're saying? I ain't got nothing to hide. Amen, 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 amen. Now, I know it's going over like a lead balloon, but I'm just telling the truth, amen. I, I, some of you, I know y'all ready for me to be through, and I'm getting ready to quit. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, friend, the devil uses this to bust up homes, bust up relationships, amen. Get on that computer and shut the door. Saw on the news this morning, I was downstairs getting some coffee uh, a little later seven this morning, getting some breakfast. Saw on the news where they got this guy, he was some kind of youth fella and got him porn charges, amen, over the internet, a child sex thing, getting him on the news, amen, because of the internet. Amen. Now let me say this to you, friend. We, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Doug. Do you spend more time with these devices than you do the divine one? Amen. Do you spend more time on the internet, the Facebook? Amen. Do you spend more time than you do than fellowshipping with God? If, if you do, you know what happens? These things become your idol. They have become our gods, amen. You just watch people when you leave. You just watch when you go down the road. Just, just watch them. Got to be plugged in. Got, got to have something in their ears. <laughs> amen. There's the wickedness of modern technology. Notice this. Now notice this. Now I've, I've got to hurry. Look at verse 3 back in our text, Psalms 101. Now the Holy Ghost showed me this. David said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. You know what you have to do with a laptop computer? You have to set it. Church sent us last year out to see Brother Kevin M out there in Arizona. I watch people. I like to watch people, amen. <laughs> Brother Rod, I sit down there and son, these people, first thing they do is put their luggage up in the, in the thing. The first thing they do is get their computers out. Then generally they sit down, amen, and put them, plug their computer in and plug them things in their ears. Got to be doing something. Got to be plugged in. Got to be talking to somebody. Got, got to be going. What happened to rest and peace? Amen. What happened just getting along with God? Psalms 46, 10. Be still and know that I'm God. You know why we can't get close to God and find out the mind of God? Because we can't sit down long enough and meditate and let the Holy Ghost speak to us. You have to set these things before your eyes. And let me give you this, and I promise you I'm through. There's stuff coming that I ain't even got wrote down. Amen. That's when God's using it. There's three things, amen, there's three things that envelop our attention with this modern technology. Number one, you've got to use your hands to hold them. Then number two, amen, it gets your vision. Number three, amen, your ears. And all three of these things, Miss Tammy, all three of these things can be used to bring honor and glory to God. Amen, your eyes to read the word. Your ears peed, amen, to hear the word. Amen. 
and your hands to hold the word. And boy, when we got those things, amen, glued to our ears and our eyes, amen, it takes our attention off of spiritual things. Amen. What about it this morning? Amen. We, we, we might even not even need no piano playing this morning. God might have spoke to your heart. You may, be, you may be a victim of modern technology and not even realize how much time that you spend, amen, with these devices. Amen. Again, it's not all bad, and some of it's necessary, I know. But maybe, maybe you've been delving into things that you shouldn't be delving into. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of wickedness on that, on that internet. A lot of wickedness and ungodliness. And son, the devil wants to tempt us. Amen. One man said, if you give the devil an inch, he'll become your ruler. Maybe some of you, amen, maybe some of you hit a nerve this morning. Maybe you just like to come up here and say, the Lord help me. Help me not to be addicted to that stuff. Lord, help me not to be overwhelmed. That it takes my attention off of things that are important. Off of you. And off souls going to hell. Off missions. Amen. I challenge you this morning. But Doug, you come. Why, why, why don't you, who will be the first one, amen, to just come and, and say, God, help me with these devices.